Now, overall, is the Prime Minister's roadshow on track? Uh, Pallavi was telling us 12.30 is expected to end. Behind schedule, on schedule? Uh, it's slightly behind schedule, uh, probably because the kind of crowd turnout that is there, uh, the convoy can't really skip any stretch or go past on any stretch. And uh, as you can see, it's going at a steady pace right now. And uh, it, it's crossed the entire uh, uh, Ramakrishna Ashram circle and probably somewhere uh, in Chamra space right now. And uh, remember, it will then head on to Basveshwar Nagar and then end uh, near Sankey Tank. That's in Maleshwaram constituency, another stronghold of the BJP. Uh, possibly by 12.45, one is when this roadshow might end is what uh, uh, we are getting, looking at where the convoy is right now and the pace at which it's passing. Uh, the area that it's passing right now, uh, the Chamrajpet area, is an interesting one. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a stronghold of the Congress. It has a significant Muslim population. The BJP has won this seat only once uh, in the 90s uh, when Pramila Nisaji won the seat. After that, the Congress has held the seat. Uh, one of its uh, Muslim pieces, Zami uh, Ramad Khan is the MLA from here. Uh, he's a popular candidate and a popular MLA. And the Congress once again fielding him from here. The BJP was hoping that uh, the former uh, police commissioner of Bengaluru, Bhaskar Rao can dent uh, the Congress's chances, but going by, going by how the campaign has gone so far, uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, they would be hoping that uh, this convoy of the Prime Minister, this roadshow of the Prime Minister passing through Chandrajpet area could give them some extra vote share uh, in this constituency. Also remember, over the last uh, year or so, the constituency has seen a couple of issues. Uh, we've had... Uh, uh, the entire Ija Maidan controversy, one of it in Hubli, the other one in Bengaluru is in this constituency in Chamraj Bay. Mm -hmm. The government finally ensuring that uh, uh, there could be a flag hoisting at the Ija Maidan that has happened. Although the ownership uh, debate is still open, it's in the court. But the BJP hoping some of these issues would swing some votes in its favour with the Congress saying that we are safe in Chamraj Bay. The BJP probably hoping that the Prime Minister can uh, ensure that his charm works here. You know, uh, as we Speaking, Harish, I think all the print photographers there got their, their you know, lead photograph uh, for the day. Prime Minister crossing and in the backdrop, a huge statue of Lord Hanuman. Uh, that, I think, is, is something that the BJP want uh, to dominate as far as the minds of the voters in Karnataka is concerned. Well, absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, just a couple of hours after uh, the Congress proposing a ban on Bajrangal in its manifesto, the Prime Minister was very quick uh, raking uh, that issue up in his... Uh, uh, speech in Karnataka and after that as well he's mentioned it at uh, multiple places saying that this is the land Punyabhumi of uh, Hanuman and here you have the Congress proposing to ban an organization that chants Hanuman's name and several leaders of the Congress party have pointed it out. Uh, they tried multiple uh, protests as well on social media and uh, off, off, offline on ground. The BJP wants to keep the momentum going, but uh, many within the party also quick to indicate that, yes, it's one issue, uh, it could be a turning point, but they are also seeing if that momentum can be kept till the 10th of this month, and uh, they're also saying that there could be other issues that will crop up, and the BJP would be waiting for it to respond uh, appropriately to end cash on it, and we've seen at least in the three issues that have come up in the last uh, 8 to 10 days, whether it's the Malika Karge statement calling the Prime Minister a poisonous snake or uh, his son, Malika, Malika Karge's son, Priyank Karge, calling the Prime Minister a useless son or even the Bajan Dalban issue. The BJP has uh, responded quickly, has encashed on it. How much of it uh, will turn into votes is something that we'll get to know on the 13th. But uh, the Congress hoping at least in the last couple of days uh, this narrative can be pulled back to local issues. Are the voters actually buying that narrative? Uh, you know, 92 abusers is what the Prime Minister said. The Congress uh, today tweeted that back saying, you know, this is the 93rd one. Uh, so Congress is not backing off. But what is the voter thinking on, on as far as these allegations are concerned? Well, there are two uh, groups of people or voters, what we have seen so far. Yes, there is a lot that is aware of these issues, uh, what's going on in the media, the headlines. But there's also a significant lot, lot especially in rural Karnataka, when we spoke to them. For them, other issues really matter. What is the government offering them? Uh, what are the other parties offering them? They're talking about price rise. They're talking about, uh, some of them have spoken about how, yes, there is PM Kisan. But uh, the state government and the revenue department here hasn't ensured there are proper RTCs, which means they 
lose out on uh, not getting pm kisan fund and uh, they are saying that that hasn't happened so there's a lot of loopholes there they are looking at how parties are promising uh, to fill in there is also talk about whether the congress is promise of giving 200 units uh, of electricity free to every household will it click in bengaluru because remember if it's 200 units then a significant chunk of the urban population also benefits because uh, if you take a uh, average middle class house probably they could be using only around 200 uh, units of electricity so the congress is hoping that that works in their favor just like how it it did for the aam aadmi party in delhi right so the aam aadmi party shadow is is visible in karnataka elections but but does the party have any pocket any standing in karnataka polls well absolutely none uh, perhaps in most constituencies they would be uh, losing their deposit probably in one constituency of roan uh, there might be a stiff challenge that the aam aadmi will put up that's only because of the candidate there uh, he's a locally popular man but in terms of the party getting a significant vote share uh, that looks very bleak uh, no candidate who can really come out and say that uh, he's posing a stiff challenge uh, to the contender there right uh, so harish uh, they're giving us the analysis uh, on the ground palavi also with with us helping us understand what the voters are uh, thinking um as far as the weather goes harish uh, you know is, is that a factor as well uh, in the way uh, the election campaigning is going on yes uh, especially in bangalore the last few days uh, it has been raining in the evening uh, remember one road show of uh, uh, home minister amit shah had to be cancelled in devnali after the road got water logged Uh, even today it's slightly overcast in bengaluru but the bjp is hoping that it will hold up at least for the next 45 minutes one hour post which uh, they can go out with the campaign but uh, the sun and the heat has been an issue in large part of kalyan karnataka kitur karnataka region uh, the temperature crossing 30 at multiple places although there has been rain uh, the increasing temperature has uh, really uh, given a beating to several leaders that we have seen in fact we saw um, even sidramaya uh, struggling in one campaign then he said the issue was the car not the heat but all political leaders accepting that uh, it was a daunting task to carry on campaigning uh, with the kind of heat that north karnataka kalyan karnataka is facing right uh, we watching as the prime minister cavalcade inches ahead it was uh, supposed to end at around 12:30 could be behind schedule by by a couple of minutes uh, uh, but harish could we see any any surprise uh, being pulled out the prime minister getting out of the car really shaking hands or or walking up to the to the, to the supporters there arunima i think one surprise would be a temple visit uh, there is a temple uh, that has been uh, uh checked by the spc uh there is a possibility of the prime minister visiting that temple uh that is what we understand uh we are not sure if that that is in the main plan or if it's a backup plan and with the prime minister's convoy still uh, around uh, uh, chamraj pet area will he go ahead with it because they are the behind schedule slightly will they go ahead with it that's something we'll have to see but that seems to be one pit stop in this road show of the prime minister Is there uh, where the prime minister's road show is expected to end uh, palavi the crowd swelling yes i don't know i mean i don't know if you can hear me in this din but i'm just going to get you those pictures once again uh, of people now gathering over here you can see the drum beats also very much over here clearly uh, waiting for the prime minister to try and turn up and of course the uh, the crowd is of course swelling up here uh, this is exactly the northwest one of the most planned colonies of uh, bengaluru malleswaram and more than that it also has a famous shivji temple which is of malleswaram and we know that one of the core vote bank which the bjp is addressing is that of the hindutva vote bank we were just talking about the entire ban on bajrang dal a short while back uh, you know how is it the bjp ripping it up they are accusing the congress party of actually being anti hindu uh, yesterday when i was speaking to the women and child welfare minister uh, smriti irani she made the point on two grounds one is a corruption issue and the second that priyanka gandhi vadra is hobnobbing and uh, campaigning but what about pictures of her offering namaz in a meeting a clear cut attempt by the bjp to 